Okay? We exalt and honor you because you are God who controls the heaven, the sea, and everything that lives there in earth. You are the Lord, and that is your name. Your glory you will not give to another, nor will your praise be given to idol. We thank you because of the privilege you've given to us tonight. Lord, many indeed are the affliction of the righteous, but you are the Lord that delivers us from them all. You do not allow us to be condemned when we are brought to trial. Amen. You are the Lord that saved by your right hand, those who trust in you. Our confidence is in our God. Our hope is in our God. In an acceptable time, He makes everything beautiful. Lord, that's why tonight we have called upon you in your glory and in your honor to testify of all your wonderful work to the children of men. What shall we say, therefore? If God be for us, who can be against us? God, you did not spare your only begotten Son. You gave him as an atonement for us all. We know through him you will give us all things, including all the benefits of life. Lord, we've gathered together tonight to exalt your name, to pray on behalf of the missionaries and every believers as there in the world. Lord, there are so many people who are supposed to have joined us tonight who are not able. Lord, you are their God. You are the Lord that healed us. You have sent your word tonight and you have healed us from our diseases. You have sent your mercy tonight and you have met us at the very point of our need. You have sent your grace and you have given us divine providence over all that you have laid your hands upon to do. Father Lord, as we gather together in your name, because your word says wherever two or three are gathered together right in your name, you are right there in their midst. Lord, because we have gathered together in your name, we believe you are with us tonight. Send down your Holy Spirit. Take preeminence over your church. Let those that are called of the Lord rejoice. Let them that exalt the name of the Lord our God never be put to shame. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, tonight you have gathered together for one purpose and one purpose only. And that purpose is to preach the gospel to every creature. To exalt the name of the Lord our God. Tonight, before we start, tonight is our tarry night. This is the last Tuesday of the month, where we, the missionary, gather together and pray for the work of the Lord and for the, those who are currently serving in the field of the mission. We have gathered tonight once again to pray on behalf of the missionary, on behalf of the church, and on behalf of every believer, where we identify what is wrong in our today world. We present it to God in prayer. And ask God for guidance. We ask God for counsel. We ask God for divine wisdom to be able to carry us through. Today, before we start, we will use the opportunity to go to the scripture. In the book of Philippians chapter 2, from verse 5 to 11. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11 where we will use the opportunity to understand our relationship with God. Why it becomes important and necessary for us to pray for the saint. Philippians 2, verse 5 to 11. I start by reading from verse 5. It says, The humble and exalted Philippians 2, verse 5 to 11. He said, The humble and exalted Christ, let his mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let the mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, 
What is this mind in Christ Jesus that we are praying about today? He was in form of a God, but did not consider it as a thing of robbery. He thinks of pride. He does not consider it as a thing of pride. To be considered equal with God. Or it is of advantage <clears throat> to be equal with God. But what did he do instead? But he made himself of no reputation. He made himself of no reputation. And that is what God expects from us, the believer tonight. He made himself of no reputation taking the form of a servant and going in in the likeness of a man. Verse 8, he make it clear to us that being formed in the appearance of a man, he did not say, okay, now I'm a man. No man is ahead of me. Let me exalt myself above men. No, he humbled himself. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. Even such a shameful death on the cross. Wherefore, because of this act, today when we measure the name of Jesus, every knees bow. The witches are tormented. The demons run away. Because when we measure that name, Jesus, heaven and earth bow to us. That is because he humbled himself. Because of that humility, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above all names. That at the measure of his name, Jesus, every name will bow. And that is the name that demons obey. That is the name that would bow before. That is the name that situation submit themselves to. Tonight, we are going to ask God for the same spirit of humility that was in Jesus Christ that God should give it to us. Because if this humility be in us, it will quicken our mortal body. It will make us to understand that being a Christian is not something we should brag about. It is something that we need for a tools of labor. God, Christ did not consider himself being a son of God as a thing of robbery or something to take advantage of. So we should not consider ourselves being a minister or being a Christian as something to take advantage of. But rather, we should humble ourselves just like Christ did. If this mind is not already in you, let us pray that God should give us such a mind that was in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, Lord, my God, we thank you once again. We exalt and honor you because you are a great God. Lord, let this mind be in us that was also in Jesus Christ. He was in the form of a God, but he does not see it as a thing of robbery to be equal with God. But he humbled himself. Even being formed a fashion as a man, he formed himself as a man, he humbled himself. Father, Lord, let this man be in me. Let it be in the church. Let it be in every Christian that has come to know God. Let this mind of humility be in us. O oh Lord God of hosts, if anyone think otherwise minded, you will reveal it unto him. You make known to us the mind that is in Christ. Let this say humility that was found in Christ, let it quicken our mortal body. Let the same humility envelop our spiritual life. Let the same humility envelop our church. Let the same humility envelop our fellowship. Let the same humility envelop our missionary work. Let it envelop our Christian activity. Father, Lord, you were in form of a God. You did not see it as a thing of to be proud of or to things to boast about, or the things to take advantage of to be equal with God, but you humble yourself. 
you made of your, yourself of no reputation, even when you found yourself as a man. You were hanged on a tree which you created, but yet you humbled yourself. Lord, let this might be in us that was also in Christ Jesus. Lord, grant us this heart of humility. Lord, extinguish every pride in me. Father, Lord, every spirit of pride that will rise up in me, that will rise up in any member of the ministry which I am part of. Father, Lord, let that pride be extinguished in the mighty name of Jesus. Because God resists the proud. He gives much grace even to the humble. Father, Lord, my God, humble me whenever my spirit is puff up. Whenever I am lifted up above myself, whenever my glory makes me feel that I have become something, Lord, empty every spirit of self and pride in my system. Lord, this I have asked through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, this is another opportunity to exalt the name of the Lord. And to glorify the king, the immortal, the invisible, the one and the only wise God. We know that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and everything that lives therein, he funded it for himself. He established it upon the cloud. There is none holy as the Lord our God. There is no one as the king of heaven. The Lord is the king of all the earth. Because the Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We are going to restore the glory of the world back to Christ. We are going to remind the world that Christ is the owner. That Christ is the king because the Lord says so. And we must bring the glory of this end of the world even to his full step because he has commissioned us to overcome the world and to take the gospel to the far and near corner of the earth we're going to pray that the grace needed for the preaching of the gospel should be granted unto us let us pray father lord my god we exalt and honor you we thank you because we know that your word is ye in us, they are amen. Father Lord, you have confirmed to us that this gospel of the kingdom should be preached to all nations of the earth. It may not be to be able to save everyone, but it should be a testimony against them that they have heard the gospel. Oh Lord my God, we beseech thee, even in this end time, that our gospel will not only be for a testimony, but it will be for the saving of the life. It will be for the drawing of the souls of men back to God. Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, that you through our word draw nation to yourself. That through the gospel you have put into our mouth, you should draw kings to your name. You should draw sons, you should draw daughter, you should draw sister, you should draw brother to your holy name. Father Lord, as we stay, because you told me that wherever the sole of my feet shall tread upon, it shall be given unto you for an inheritance. Father, wherever the sole of my feet will tread upon, in every nation of the earth, in every area, wherever the sense of my voice are heard, Father Lord, let them be given to you for an inheritance. Let them be given to you for an inheritance. Father Lord, wherever people, the children of God are gathered to preach your word, Lord, present yourself. Father Lord, draw men to your name. Draw kings to your name. Draw nation to your name. Draw the lost to your name. For the Son of Man did not come to call the righteous. He came to call those who were lost. Lord, we pray that even the lost will be found. Even the lost will be found in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Before we continue, today I will be your host. My name is Missionary Collins. I'm a member of CGF Open House Fellowship. And we are interested in teaching you, praying with you every single day because we entertain missionary. Throughout this prayer time, we entertain requests. Any request we have received in the previous week, we're going to use it and add it to our prayer points as we pray for you. But if you have your requests you want us to pray about, 
please our email are there on the screen send us an email we will use your prayer request during the next time of this meeting to pray with you and to pray with the rest of the saint this is an intercessory prayer where we use opportunity to pray for every problems of the believers we believe that you are one of them it's not only to pray for the missionaries who are in the feed but to pray for every believer who feel that is facing any challenge in life we use this opportunity to come together to bring him before god and to exert to pray for the saints that is the purpose of this gathering brethren our next prayer request is this it's taken from proverb chapter 11 verse 14. let us read proverb chapter 11 verse 14. proverb 11 14. Proverb 11, 14, I read. It said, Here there is no counsel that people fall, but in the multitude of counsel there is safety. Where there is no counsel, the people perish. Brethren, in the multitude of counsel there is safety. Let us pray that God should rest upon us the spirit of counsel, the spirit of wisdom, and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Because without the counsel of the Lord, the church cannot stand the test of time. We are going to ask God for his spirit of counsel to rest upon the church. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Spirit divine, we ask for your divine counsel to rest upon the members in every church. Because you say, in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Lord, we ask for your safety to rest upon every believer through the counsel that the Holy Spirit provides for us. Father, Lord, as long as the earth remains, never allow the church loses the effect of your counsel the effects of your counsel, the effects of your glory and your restoration. Father, bring your counsel to the body of Christ. Let your counsel be what we sought after. Let your counsel be the source of our wisdom. Let your counsel be the meaning of our life. Father, Lord, when we decide to seek for what is good, whatever it seems good in our eyes. Whatever seems good to our minutes members, whatever seems good to our follower, whatever seems good to those who are lost out there, Father, let your cancer confess. Let us remember to consult the Lord. The Bible says in all our way, we should acknowledge God. We should not lean upon our own understanding. That if we acknowledge you, you will direct our path. Lord, as we begin to acknowledge you today in our churches, as we begin to acknowledge you in our service, as we begin to acknowledge you in our mission, as we begin to acknowledge you in our marriage, as we begin to acknowledge you in our thinking, not just doing rational thinking, but acknowledging you, Lord, you will begin to direct our path. You will begin to direct our footsteps. You will begin to direct our marriage. You will begin to direct our financial life. You will begin to direct our spiritual life. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brethren, we're still going to pray. The next prayer point we're going to take says, come from the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7 from verse 26 and 27. Daniel. Let's go to the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 7. Verse 26 and 27. It says, But the court shall be seated, and they shall take away his dominion, and to consume and destroy forever. 27 says, The kingdom and the dominions, and the greatness of the kingdom, under the whole heaven, shall be given to the people. And the saints of the Most High. And his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And his dominion 
she said and obey him. First, uh, we are going to take two prayer points from this place. The first prayer point is that the Lord will not allow the enemy to take away the dominion of the saints. The dominion of the Christians will not be taken away because of our foolishness or because we hand over our portrait to the enemy. The law will not allow those who think they have authority, those who think they have power, those who think they are the principalities or they are the power, the rulers of the dark forces of this age, to take away our authority and dominion. Let us pray. Father, Lord, my God, we thank you. We exalt and we honor you. We say, O oh Lord, our dominion cannot be taken away by those that hate us. Our dominion will not be taken away by those who think that authority of the earth belongs to them. Lord, our dominion will not be taken away by those who God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who hope is in this world. Our dominion will never be given to the wicked. Our dominion will not be given to the men of this world. The Lord will restore the dominions of his people. The dominion of his people will not be given to the wicked. They are food. The Lord has sworn in his anger. And he has promised that the enemy will no longer eat the fruits that are made for the righteous. Lord, we will not plant vineyard for another man to eat. We will not labor for another man to reap. Father, Lord, they that have labored for the and plant the vineyard shall eat the fruit thereof. Father, Lord, we will not work for another man to reap our labor. Father, Lord, this is your decree. And from henceforth it shall stand because you are our God. You say we should call upon you in the days of trouble and you will deliver us. Holy Spirit, when we do not know what to pray for as we ought, you help our infirmities. We go on in that cannot be uttered. When you go on, the Spirit itself testifies that we are the children of God. No, tonight I believe that your Spirit bearing weakness with our Spirit, and you agree with me in prayer that behold, our dominion will no more be taken away. Neither will our food be given to our enemy. Neither will our blessing be handed over to Satan because the Lord has spoken it. And even so shall it come to pass. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the second prayer point follows, which says, The kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven has been given to the people and the saints of the Most High. Because the Lord says in his word, let us the saints sing rejoicing in glory. Let us sing aloud upon our coaches. Let the high praise of the Lord fill our mouths. We too a sword upon our heads to execute vengeance upon the heathen, to bind the kings of the earth with chains and their rulers with fatters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment that God himself has written before the foundation of the world. This honor we the saint have. So Lord, as the saint of God, we will not lose our dominions to the world. We will not lose our ground to the devil. We will not lose our ground to the men whose God is their belly. Oh, let us pray. Father, today I decree and I stand upon your authority. And I say, Lord, we will not lose our ground to the men of this world. We will not lose our ground to principalities. We will not lose our ground to the people who God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame. Father, we will stand with the saints and we will rejoice with glory. We will sing glad praises of the Lord upon our coaches. The high praise of God will be upon our mouth. We too a sword upon our heads to execute vengeance upon the heathen, to bind the kings of the earth with chains. This honor we must retain. This honor the saints must retain. This honor the saints that trust in the Lord Jesus Christ must retain. Father, Lord, we will not lose our honor. We will not lose our strength. We will not lose our glory. We will not lose our expectation. Because the Bible told me that the expectation of the righteous will never be cut off. Father, Lord, our expectation today will stand at liberty forever. Our expectation will not be cut off. Because the Lord knoweth those who are ish. 
and everyone that named the name of the Lord will depart from iniquity. Father Lord, today we pray that the saints of God will stand in glory. Lord, the saints of God will possess the kingdom of this world. They will possess the gate of their enemy. They will possess the gate of those that hate them. They will possess the gate of the kingdom of hell. They will possess the gates of those that cease themselves at ease. Lord, the saints of God tonight, let them possess their possession in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the saints of God possess their possession in the mighty name of Jesus. We use this time to exalt and to glorify the name of the Lord. For our God is the God of strength. There is no unrighteousness in him. There is no searching of his understanding. His ways are past finding out. Lord, we the saints will possess all the dominion and all the glory and the victory that is meant for the people of God. Lord, we exalt and honor you. We thank you because of whom you are. Be thou exalted, O Lord, above the earth. Let your glory be above all the sea. Lord, we use this opportunity to honor you, to thank you for the privilege that only you can provide. We thank you for the understanding that only you can give. Take glory, Father. Take glory, Son. Take glory, Holy Spirit. For thou alone are worthy to be praised. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. The next point we are going to exalt the name of the Lord on is the point that has to deal with the glory of God. Our text is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4. That is where we are going to be praying for today. Isaiah 2 verse 4. What does he say? It says, He shall judge between the nation and rebuke many. He shall judge between the nation and rebuke many people. And they shall beat. He shall judge between nation and rebuke many. And today, we are going to ask God to judge between the nation and rebuke many. The Lord indeed will judge between nations and rebuke many people. So he said, he will rebuke many people. They shall beat their sword into spread, into prony shares, and their spear into prony hook. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. That is going to be our prayer. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, not anymore. So tonight, we are going to ask God to bring this cancer to pass in our days. We are going to ask God to make to bring peace upon nations, so that we can have a free course to preach the gospel. Remember, the gospel of the kingdom must be preached to all nations as a testimony against them before the end can come. For we to be able to preach this gospel, we need peace. We cannot preach in the middle of battle. That's why we need nation not to lift up sword against nation, not anymore. That God himself, the giver of peace, will restore peace among the nation. Not because of their righteousness, but because of his name's sake. So that the gospel of the kingdom can have a free course. Let us pray. Father, Lord my God, I decree. From henceforth, O Lord God of hosts, there shall be peace among the nations. Nation will no more raise sword against nations. O Lord, you make it clear to me that you will restore peace among the nations. Let your peace, O Lord, be restored tonight. Let your peace be restored tonight. Let your peace be restored tonight. Because as you have promised us in your word, so shall your cancer come to pass. So shall your cancer come to pass. Lord, we ask that your grace be sufficient for us. Because we know that your grace is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, when you are weak, when we are weak, you are stronger. Lord, restore your spiritual strength in us today. 
This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. O Lord our God, restore strength to the weak. Restore glory to those that have no might. Father Lord, you told me that those who have no might, you are the God that increases strength. Lord, restore our strength. Restore our glory. Restore everything you have done on our behalf. Lord, let your name be exalted above all things. Let your glory be above the earth. Lord, restore peace to the nation. Restore peace to the nation. The nation around us will no more lift sword against each other. Lord, even their sword will be beaten into crony hook. Oh Lord, their spear will be beaten into hooks. Oh Lord, nation shall no more lift sword against nation. Neither shall they any man on earth learn war. Father, Lord, let peace be restored to every nation. Let peace be restored, especially to Nigeria, who is in the midst of spiritual challenges right now because of the election was unfavorable to those whom the people vote for, but rather it was swing in favor of some people. Father, Lord, we pray that your peace should overshadow the war that the enemy set up. That your peace, O oh Lord, will take preeminence. Lord, we pray that your grace should be sufficient for all. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our next prayer point is as follows. We are going to ask God to come down in his mighty power and take over the dominion of the church. Because the Bible told us that the saints shall possess the kingdom and they shall rule over it forever and ever. We are asking God for his kingdom to come. Because if his kingdom come, his will will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Now let us pray that God's kingdom should come down today. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we stand our ground and say, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our lives as it is being done in heaven. Let your glory and your dominion reign over the church. Let your people know that their God is the rulers of the universe. Let all nations come and bow before you. Let those that hate you come and worship before you. For you alone are God. Beside you was no God formed. Outside you there is no Savior. Without you there is no intercessor. Lord, that's why we have come together as the people of God. And we say, Lord, let your glory be above all the earth. Let your glory be above all the sea. Lord, we know your word. We know you are able to communicate your word to every heart. Father, Lord, draw men to yourself. Draw king to yourself. Draw people to yourself. Draw them, O oh Lord our God. We pray that your greatness be known in the church. That your might be known in the church. Because you said to us, upon this rock you will build your church. And that the gate of hell will never prevail against it. Father Lord, you promised us you will give us the keys of the kingdom of heaven. That whatever we bound on earth will be bound in heaven. Lord, we say today, we lose the keys of the kingdom of heaven upon the people of God. And we say today, the enemy will no more eat their bread. The enemies will no more eat their bread. Father Lord, they will not labor for other people to reap the benefit. Father Lord, you will prove your name stronger and stronger in the midst of us. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Be thou exalted, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord says we should rejoice always. In the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, from verse 16 to 18, he said, rejoice always. Pray without season. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. What is the will of God for us? That we should pray without season. That we should give thanks in every circumstances we find ourselves. Tonight we are going to give thanks. We are going to exalt the name of the Lord. On behalf of the church. On behalf of the people of God. And we are going to thank him for all his benefits, for all his wonderful works to the children of men. 
The Bible told us that let us give thanks to God in Psalm 107 for his goodness and for his wonderful words to the children of men. And that's why tonight we are going to pray. We are going to give thanks to the Lord for who he is, for who he is gracious, for his mercy, for his kindness, for giving us the grace to share the good news even in the midst of this troublous time. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank God and we thank you for your presence, for not leaving us comfortless in the midst of this crook and preserved generation. Lord, despite all that we have been through, we still have the ability to share your word. We still have the ability to present God to the people. Father, Lord, you have not leaving us comfortless. Lord, we thank you for sending us the comforter. Lord, thank you for giving us the way, grace and the will to pray. Because the Bible told me when there is a man to pray, there is a God to listen. Father, Lord, because we know tonight as we gather together and pray, yeah, we knew there is a God to listen. And we know God is the God that inhabits the prayer of his people. Father, Lord, we know that you are the Lord that dwells in the prayer of your people. Tonight, as we lift up our voice in praises, as we lift up our voice in exalting your name, as we lift up our voice in interceding on behalf of the same, Lord, you will build your throne. You will build your throne. Lord, you will build your throne. Lord, you will build your throne. You will cause your glory to be shown to all the air. You will cause your presence to reign in the midst of things. You will cause your name to be exalted above the heaven. Father, Lord, we stand in aware of your presence. We say, let the sick be healed. Let the lame walk. Let the blind eyes be opened. Let those that sit in darkness let great light shine. Father Lord, we give all the glory because in your name was the heaven established of old. By your dominion, the ends of the earth was created. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Glorious in holiness and fearful in praises, always doing wonders by your works. Hallelujah. For our God is the God of power. There is no searching of his understanding. His ways are past finding out. Wisdom and might belongs to you. The ends of the ends of ends of heaven, they bow their knees unto you. O oh Lord, to you belong the issues from death. To you belong power. To you belong dominion. To you belong wisdom. To you belong knowledge. To you belong understanding. To you belong the praise of your people. To you belong glory, honor, dominion, might, wisdom forever and ever. Father Lord, let your name be glorified. Let your name be glorified. Let the glory of the Lord presence fill the whole world. Let the praise that is befalling the anointing, let them exalt. Let our children be taught of the Lord. Let the peace in our ministry be great. Let the peace in the world be great. Let the peace in your church be great. Father Lord, we honor you. We thank you. We glorify your name. For giving us Jesus Christ, who gave himself as an atonement for our sin. And he made us king and prince unto our God. Father Lord, today we have the ability to reign with you on the earth. What shall we say, therefore? We in time past, we were not a people. We were caught uncircumcised by the so-called circumcision that were made by hands in human flesh by the Jews. But Lord, today we are God people. Today we are a chosen race. Today we are a peculiar people. Today we are people of God who should show forth the praise of the Lord who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light into his marvelous life. Oh, now I can boldly come to the throne of grace. I ask God for help in time of need. And I expect an answer because the righteousness that is of faith does not say anymore who will ascend into heaven to bring Christ to the end or who will descend into hell to raise Christ up from the grave. But what does he say? The word is in my mouth. The word is nigh me. The word of faith which I speak. And I shall decree it in, and it shall come to pass, and light will shine upon my words. For this sake, and I say, O Lord our God, be thou exalted, be thou exalted, be thou exalted, be thou exalted. Let your glory be above all the earth, let it be above all the sea, let it be above all the cloud. For there is none holy as the Lord our God, there is none beside him, there is no king in heaven beside our God. For our God is gracious and true. Righteousness and equity 
and with him. Oh Lord, to you belong wisdom. To you belong knowledge. To you belong understanding. Oh Lord our God, for thou art faithful. For thou art faithful. For you alone are worthy to be praised. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, we're going to still pray. This time our prayer point is taken from the book of 1 John chapter 5 verse 6. Verse 16. First John chapter 5, verse 16. He said, If you see any brother or sister commit sin that does not lead to death, you should pray and God will give them life. I rather to those whose sins does lead to death, there is a sin that leads unto death. I am not saying that you should pray about that. Lord, we know there are sins that lead unto death. But you said to us, if we see a brother that did commit sin, and this sin that they have committed does not lead unto death, we should pray that God should restore such a one. Father Lord, that's why we have come to you tonight, to cry on behalf of the church, and on behalf of the people of God, who have sinned for the Lord that you should restore their holiness back to them, that you should restore the church back to the former sanity, that you should restore the grace of God upon those who have lost their way, who has been taken out, who were taken captive by the devil according to their will. Father, Lord, my God, we know it is written, can the lawful captive be delivered? Can the prey be taken from the hand of the terrible? The Lord has said to us, the lawful captive tonight will be delivered. The prey will be taken from the hand of the terrible because the Lord says he will contend on their behalf. Lord, tonight we contend on behalf of the church. We contend on behalf of the people of God. We contend on behalf of those who does not know their rights from left in Christ Jesus. Even for those who have seen a sin leading unto death, but did it in ignorance, Lord, we pray for them. Because you said, the day of ignorance, God overlook. Because he has commanded all men from everywhere to repent. Lord, my God, we pray for the spirit of repentance. Lord, help these souls to bring forth fruits that is meant for repentance. Lord, we pray thee that you should draw men to yourself. Because we knew that no man have the ability to of himself come to you. Except you, the Father, draw it him. Lord, draw brothers, draw sisters, draw men, draw ministers, draw pastors, draw church leaders, draw elder, draw deacon, draw wisdom, and draw as many that are lost to your grace. Lord, draw men to your name, that in everything, only your name and your name alone will be glorified. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Our next prayer point is from the same first John. Chapter 5, verse 15. He said, If you know that he hears you, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of him. So it takes confidence for you to know that he hears you. Because the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. If you come to God, you must believe that God is God. That when you pray, He hears you. And because we know tonight He hears us, we believe we have our petition. We believe that all we ask of Him on behalf of the church, He will do. And that's why tonight, we're going to use this opportunity to come before God and say, Lord, we know you hear at us. Lord, we know when we pray, even before we pray, you hear us. And because we know you hear us, we purify ourselves because you are pure. Let us pray. Father, thank you for hearing me always. And I know you, even tonight, you have heard me already. And that's why we believe that the sick will be healed. That's why we believe that the poor will receive new hope. That's why we believe. That those that sit in darkness, a great light is shining tonight. That's why we believe those that sit in the very of the valley of the shadow of death, great light has shone upon them. That's why we believe that those who mourn 
are comforted. Even those who mourn in Zion will be comforted tonight. Father, Lord, we believe your word. And your word is settled in heaven. Forever, Lord, it is settled. That's why we believe that the sick can be healed. That's why we believe that the lame can walk. That's why we believe that the eyes of the blind can be opened. That's why we believe the church can receive redemption. That's why we believe that those that are appointed to die, the spirit of life can come to them. That's why we believe that those that sit in darkness, great light can still shine. Father, Lord, tonight, we believe your word. And we know that your word is settled. Because when we pray, we know you hear at us. And because we know you hear us, we purify ourselves because you are pure. Because you are a pure God. We know that you are holy. There is no unrighteousness with you. Lord, therefore, we sanctify ourselves tonight. Because the Lord has heard us. He has heard us already. And he will hear us and keep hearing us. Yes. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence that is mighty in the church. Amen. Oh Lord, thank you for releasing breakthrough among your people. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our next prayer point is taken from to pray against anxiety, anxiousness in the church. Because a lot of people are anxious. And the Bible warns us not to be anxious about what we will eat, what we will drink, what we will wear, how we will go. All these things are deep for the Gentile. They seek for it. Your Heavenly Father, from the day you were born till now, He knew you need all these things. He, need you, he know you need clothes to wear. He know you need food to eat. He knew you need money to spend. He know how you will go from one location to the other. Even your ministry, he was the one who called you into it. You did not call yourself. He know you need money to execute some projects. And he knew about the place you need to travel to. You need transportation. Your Heavenly Father know all these things. He has also made a way of providing for it. Remember, Hagar, Abraham's wife, when he was free from his ministry, he was without water. He cried unto the Lord. See, he does not want to see the death of the lad. But what did God show him? There was a pool of water in his front. The Lord is telling you today, why you are crying over nothing? God has already made provision. God cannot send you to a destination where there is no provision. God cannot allow your feet to carry you to a place where his blessings are not laid down for you. His blessings are already on your path. All you need to do tonight is to open your eyes to see them. The Lord is saying that today he will remove stress from your life. The thing that stress you most will be taken away. Lord Jesus, I pray tonight that you will remove stress from the church. You will remove stress from your people. Lord, their life will, even at the dangerous portions of their life, they will be stress-free. When they go through the fire, they will not be burnt. When they walk through the water, it will not overwhelm them. Because the Lord is the strength of the upright, and his ears is open to their cries. The Lord our God is the God of strength. Equity and justice lies with him. So it seems my body, mind and spirit struggle to keep physically and mentally fit because of stress and anger, anger and situation of things that compass us about. But the Lord will remove that stress tonight. Mm -hmm. The Lord will remove that stress that makes us mentally unfit. Sometimes we sit down for nothing, we give our heart, ourselves heart attack because of what we are going through. Because we think that God has forgotten us. Because we think that all doors are closed. The Lord is saying to you today, the only reason why you are not seeing any help is because I'm carrying you. The only two feet you are saying, I am taking you in my hand. The Lord is taking us in his hand today. The Lord is leading us through. He will not allow us to be condemned when we are brought to trial. The Lord will protect his own. Spiritually, some days, our city tax us and it makes us deceitful predators. Mm. 
It makes us feel that there is no help coming from anywhere. That God has abandoned us. That the temptation is very worried and he will swallow us up. But the Lord is the strength of the upright. The Lord is the protector of his people. And those, for a moment of apprehension, you would seem to have been forgotten. The Lord said he will help. The Lord will help us. The Lord will bring us out. He will help us to remember that we belong to him. Lord, help us to remember today, even in our time of anxiety, that you are our God. That you are our Father's God. You said, can a mother forsake a suckling child? That she will not even have compassion on the child of her home. Father Lord, you say even though a mother may forget, but you, our Father, you will not forget us. You will not forget us. We should always know in our deep time of sorrow and stress and distress that we have a Father that cares. We have a God who loves us. Not that we love him, but because he loved us. Because he first loved us. He loved us to the extent that he gave his only begotten son to become a propitiation for sin for our sake. Oh Lord God of all, if we consider you who has endured such thing for us, why would we ever doubt your love for us? Why would we ever doubt your care for us? You that could send your son to die for us, is it our food you cannot take care of? Is it our job you cannot take care of? Is it our body you cannot heal? Is it our situation that you cannot meet? Is it our need that you cannot grant? You are our God. We can boldly come to the throne of grace today and ask you for help in this time of need. Father Lord, that's why tonight we are coming to you. We are coming to you with our body. We take all our body, all our sorrow, everything that makes us anxious, we lay it at the footstep of Jesus. We lay it at the footstep of Jesus. Oh Lord, teach me the way to respond to problem so that I will give thanks to your name. Lord, teach me not to assume that you have abandoned me. Teach the church not to assume that you have left them alone. Let them realize that you cannot forget us. You are the God who created the ear. You can hear you are the God who created the eyes you can see. Mm -hmm. You are the God who created my hand you can handle. You are the God that created the feet you can walk. Yes. Father, Lord, my God, you cannot forsake your children. Mm -hmm. Your children trust in you. Yes. And the Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord their God, they shall renew their strength. Lord, help our strength to be renewed tonight. Let our strength, our spirit be revigorated by the strength of the Holy Spirit. Lord, let our spirit be revigorated. Let our strength be renewed like that of an ego. Father, Lord, help us to soar to the mountain and be at peace. Lord, my God, we know that this storm of life sometimes make us feel that we are forgotten. After all, Jesus was in the ship. The disciples still cry out and say, Master, save us, we perish. But he is the master of the wave. He was with them, but they still cry out. Because the situation, the devil always roar like a roaring lion. But the Lord says that he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the conquering root of David. No lion, no sheep, no sea can swallow the boat where he lies. Our God is the God of strength. Equity and justice are with him. He does not turn back on his own. He is the good shepherd. And the good shepherd laid down his life on behalf of his sheep. Oh, the Lord is laying down his life. He has done it before and he has the power to take it again. He has the power to lay it down of his own accord. No man taketh it from him. He is our good shepherd. He will not turn back to us. We, don't, we have never seen such a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow shares. What a friend we have in Jesus. He is all my guilt and sins to bear. Oh, what a privilege to remember. That we have a great friend in Jesus to carry everything to his to him in prayer. Oh Lord, help me today to realize. Help the church to realize. Help your people to know that whenever the problem comes, whenever the storm of life comes, we should bring him to Jesus. He will turn our sorrow to joy. He will turn our shame to victory. He will turn our disappointment to blessing. Lord, tonight, help me to bring all my sorrow to bring all my trial, to bring all my difficulties to you. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Our next prayer is to pray over stress. Stress can make people unreasonable, especially in the ministry. It can make even the mighty flee from battle. Stress can make people uncomfortable, even in the presence of God. Stress makes you feel and see invisible enemy as Christian. Even when the enemy does not exist. The Lord says, O ye sons of men, ye are God. But do you know the reason why you will die like men? Because you allow stress to rule you. You have no knowledge. But God sits in the solitudes among kings, among gods of the earth. And who are these God? You. And he says, you sons of men, do you know you are God? But the truth is that you will die like men. Amen. The only reason why you will die like men is because you lack wisdom. Yes. You lack understanding to realize that as God, you should shape on the earth. Yes. You should set the captive free. Release oppression from the oppressed. And save the people. Rid the wicked out of the earth. Restore peace to the people of God. And that is the only reason. Because you do not have knowledge, you will not know and you will not understand. You will fall like one of the princes. You will die like men. But Lord, today, we have refused as the church to die like one of the princes. We refuse to fall like one of the men of this earth. Father, Lord, we will obtain wisdom. We will not die like men. We will not fall like one of these princes. The Lord, we thank you that you want us to cut the cost. You want us to care, to cast all our cares on you. Lord, we thank you that there is nowhere I can go that you are not with me. So stress cannot overtake me because I know if I lie down in the belly of the sea, you are with me. If I say to fire, cover me up, you are there with me. Even if I go down to the grave, you are there. Your presence will be there to lead me. Lord, I thank you for having a hold on my life. Even if I feel everything is crumbling around me, I know you are with me. You are never going to leave me nor forsake me. Lord, I confess that I have let stress take hold of my life. Even to the extent of doing things that are not convenient. Things I do not want to do. Lord, from henceforth, I will realize, and the church will realize, in their situation of stress, that the Lord is the God of strength. That equity and justice abide with Him. Lord, rather than you, I have let stress control my mood, my attitudes, my actions. Lord, I repent of all that. Please, Father, help me to see what is stressful in my life. I hand them over to you. Because I do not have control over my life. My life is hidden in Christ and Christ in God. I should not try to control stress on my own. I should hand them over to the Father. Lord, help the church to know this word. Help the church to take their stress to God and to live it there. Because if they trust and never doubt, you will surely bring them out. Lord, I pray on behalf of the missionaries out there who are experiencing stress, on behalf of the pastors, on behalf of the churches, on behalf of the people who are so frustrated because of the situation and stress they found themselves, that even some are contemplating mothers. Lord, I pray for them that they will realize that the only way to handle stress is to take them to the one who can take them away. And that person is God. No amount of counseling can make you stay off drugs. You can only stay off drugs if you give your life to Christ. No amount of therapy can mix a frustrated person say, The only way to be saved is to hand your life over to God. If you come to him, he will redeem you. And he will make you a better person. Help me, Lord, not to let stress get the better of me. 
O Lord, help me to be active, the taking of your goodness all the time. Lord, it says when we are filled with world worries and we don't know what to do, we should count your many blessings. Every doubt and stress will flee. Lord, help me to count your blessing, not to count my defeat. Lord, a true soldier does not count the loss in battle, but rather he counts the victory that God has given him. Lord, help me to always count the victory, not the sorrow, not what was lost along the road, but what was gained. Lord, no matter what I go through in life, help me to remember the souls that you have saved through me, to remember the blessing you have blessed me with. When I think of others and their lands and gold, help me to remember that God has promised me his wealth untold. My reward in heaven, my home on earth, Oh Lord, help me to count my blessing. Help the people of God everywhere in the world to remember to count their blessing, not their sorrow. To count the joy of the Lord and the victory of the Most High. Nothing else should matter to them but the joy that the Lord provides. Lord, help us to look up to you, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despite the shame. Lord, I am hopeful of my eternity with you. Lord, where you, we, where there will be no more strife, there will be no more sorrow, there will be no more pain, there will be no more tears, because the Lord will wipe all tears from my eyes. Lord, I will not wait for eternity for you to wipe the tears away. Lord, my tears will be wiped away today. The tears of many believers will be wiped away today. The tears of many Christians who are crying upon their bed right now, even in a stressful situation, saying, God, when will you take this body? Lord, tonight, that body is lifted. Jesus said, come to me, all you that labor. And you that are tired of labor, come to me, I will give you rest. There is rest for a believer tonight. There is rest for the lost. There is rest for the forsaken. There is rest for the uncomforted. The Lord is the comforter. The Lord is the good comforter. He will send his word into your life tonight. And he will comfort you of that distress. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Brethren. We are going to pray. We just have three more prayer points to go. But those prayer points are significant. We are going to pray to God against fear. Fear. Because fear is a catastrophic disaster. The only reason why Jesus did wonders in the scripture and you can't find yourself doing it is because of fear. The only reason why Jesus walked on the water, Peter tried to walk and faint and was beginning to sink was fear. The only reason why Jesus cast out the paralytic, the disciples were still to do the same, they could not, is because of fear. Brethren, Fear is a killer. And as a believer, you must eliminate fear from your life. God is asking you to take away the spirit of fear tonight. That's why to help you. In the Bible, there are about 365 fear not. Every day when you wake up, say one to yourself, fear not. When the devil tries to assail you with automatic war, tell him fear not. Because the Lord is my strength. And my hope whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. To whom shall I be afraid? Lord, I pray tonight that you remove the spirit of fear and every crazy and chaotic word that make people to be afraid. Because the Bible, even David said, the flood of the ungodly, they are so terrifying to the extent they make you afraid. But the Lord said, fear not. Be still and know that I am God. Even Moses saw in the, seeing the Egyptian, seeing the rest here at the front, they was frightening situation. The people begin to break from him. But what does he say? The Lord said to him, Fear not. The Lord is saying to you tonight, Fear not. Be still and know that I am God. Tonight, I say, no matter whatever the enemy send your way, the Lord said, I should tell you, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. 
When the enemy pursues you, match your break. Do not run far. Match your break. Remember what the book of Proverbs tells you. It says, when the king is after your life, don't leave your house. Don't run away because he's after your life. Because his army will overtake you. His chariot of pursuit will assail over you. But be steadfast, unmovable, always abide in the work of the Lord. Because the Lord protects his own. Because the Bible says the Lord knoweth those who are his. Everyone that names the name of the Lord tonight should depart from iniquity. Let us pray. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you conquer the spirit of fear in us. That you take away fear from the body of Christ. Help us to realize, because when we fear, we are telling the devil, we don't trust God enough to save us. Lord, we trust you. We know you are more than able to do exceedingly above what we can think, ask of, or even imagine. Lord, we will not allow fear to rob us of the victory you have prepared. We will not allow fear to rob you of our maritime joy. We will not allow fear to rob you of our spiritual blessing you have provided. We will not allow fear to rob you of our healing. We will not allow fear to rob you of our victory. Lord, therefore, I stand against every spirit of fear. And I cast it out of your church. And out of the life of every believer. And I restore the spirit of glory. The spirit of joy. Because fear has woe. Fear has torment. Father Lord, the torment that come with fear will not be entertained in the church anymore. Father, we cast away the fear and all his woe. We cast away the spirit of fear and all his torment. And henceforth, fear shall no more make believers fall into sin. Fear shall no more make missionary a battlefield. Fear shall no more be the reason why churches are crumbling, why believers cannot have what God has promised them. But from henceforth, we will be bold as a lion. Because the Bible told us the righteous is as bold as a lion. Because we will live a holy life and live in God's righteousness, our boldness will be strong. We, the righteous, will be as bold as a lion. But we would rather fear should be for the wicked. Because they should flee. Why not my pursuit them? Lastly, we're going to pray. We're going to ask God to take away every spirit of anxiety attack from the church. Anxiety. What did Jesus say to you? Having food to eat and water to drink, you should be content. Don't be anxious about life. About what you will eat. How you will grow old. What you will wear. The number of shoes you have in your desk. The number of hair that has become white in your head. The number of children you are supposed to have that are not yet coming. Do not be anxious. No man. The Bible makes me understand that no man by worrying about life can add one yacht or tito to his life. The Bible says in everything give thanks. Lord, help the church to overcome anxiety by thanksgiving. Give thanks to, the, to God. Whatever situation, whether good or bad, learn to give thanks. Lord, help us as Christians to remember to give thanks in bad situations. Not only when things are good, but to give thanks when things are terrible. To give thanks when all hope are gone. To give thanks when all the blessing that should come become tears. Lord, help us to give thanks. Because it is the will of God concerning us at that point. Oh Lord, I give you thanks. Because our city and anxiety will not have dominion over me. They will not have dominion over the church where I rule. They will not have dominion over the people of God. Oh Lord, the saints we sing rejoicing in glory. The Lord has not taught us to fear because he has not given us the spirit of fear. The spirit the Lord gave to me is the spirit of boldness, the spirit to love my neighbors, the spirit of soundness of mind, 
Lord, that's why tonight I stand upon that authority of the grace of God. I release the spirit of boldness into the believers. I release the spirit of boldness into the church. I release the spirit of sadness of man into every broken heart. Lord, let every stressful mind receive the spirit of strength. Let the spirit of strength fill the heart of the weary heart. Father, I decree, let your spirit of peace, your spirit of wisdom, your spirit of the fear of the Lord, Father, Lord, my God, even those who are afraid of death, let them know that death is a transformation right for the believer, that death is not the end of life. But Lord God of hosts, that death is just the beginning of the journey. Lord, for as many that sit in darkness, let great light shine. As many that sit in the valley of the shadow of death, be allotted with all form of evil. Lord, I decree, the light of God is shining right now. Comes to the light. The Lord Jesus will give you light. The Lord Jesus will give you light. He will bring light to your darkness. Healings to your womb. He will bring hope to your tears. I will be courage to your defeats. The Lord is the Lord of strength. Those who trust in Him, even though they are down, they are not cast down. The Lord will lift them up. The Lord is lifting you up tonight. The Lord is lifting you up from that bondage. The Lord is lifting up your church. Oh, you, is it membership issue? You look around, the member of the church, they don't just grow more than two. With the day they complete three, one will go away. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you, that the church is of the Lord. It is not your church. Do not bother about the lost program. Lift it up to God. In his own time, he makes everything beautiful. The Lord is going to make that situation beautiful for tonight. From tonight, your redemption has come. Oh, he said, go and tell it on the hills. Tell the people of Israel that the Lord their yeah, God is in the midst of them. Oh, let them be rejoicing because their yeah, redemption has come. Their yeah, redemption has come. And I say to the church of God tonight, your redemption has come. Your redemption has come. Your blessing has come. Your victory has come. The Lord told me at the beginning of this year, this year will be a year of victory for the saints, but it will be a year of terror for the wicked. Oh, as many that trust in the Lord, Receive the grace to excel. Receive the grace to be blessed. Receive the grace to overcome acidity and fear. Receive the grace to be steadfast. Remember, fear is not from God. It's from the devil. And so, therefore, you spirit of fear, I cast you out of the body of Christ. I cast you out of the body of Christ. You shall henceforth. No more have dominion over the people of God. Hmm. The Bible says the saints shall possess the kingdom and they shall rule over it forever and ever. Tonight I decree and I declare, O oh Lord, let there be divine healing for as many that are sick. Lord, I decree as many that sat in bondage, let light begin to shine. As many that are under oppression, Lord, I have reports. That some brethren cry that every night they have been oppressed. But tonight I say, let that oppression cease permanently in the mighty name of Jesus. Let that oppression cease permanently in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, from tonight I decree, pursue your pursuer. I decree, attack your attacker. I decree, oppress your oppressor in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, if I be the servant of the Lord, let's the Lord cause you to oppress your oppressor. Let the Lord cause you to pursue your pursuer. Let it cause you to attack your attacker. Begin to return what the Lord has given you that the enemy has stolen. Tonight is the night to pursue. Tonight is the night to overtake. Tonight is the night to recover all. Recover all. Recover all. In the mighty name of Jesus. I stand upon the authority of the word of God. I say recover all. Recover all. Pursue. Overtake. And recover all. Father, Lord, my God. There is no more. No more. No more. No more. With the bread that is meant for your children. Be eaten by their enemies. 
No more will the food that is meant for the righteous be given to the wicked. Not anymore. Not as a leaf, says the Lord. Lord, it shall not the food. You shall not plant a feed and another man will reap. You shall not labor and another man will eat the fruit of your labor. Oh Lord, they that plant it will eat it. Father, you will revise every evil that the enemy has sought to do in Nigeria. Father, tonight I decree yes. and I declare yes. that as the Lord liveth, his cancer will come to pass. His cancer will come to pass. Lord, it is not of him that runneth, it is not of him that willeth, but the Lord himself that showeth mercy. Father, Lord, the chains of evil in that nation will be broken. The wickedness of the wicked will come to an end. Father, Lord, you will restore peace to that nation. This we decree in the name of God the Father. This we decree in the name of God the Son. This we decree in the name of God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, lastly, we're still going to have one more prayer. And this prayer is this. We're going to pray that pray for the word that God should stop worrying and calm the mind of the believers. Because a lot of believers are worried about food. They worry about clothes. They worry about their business. They worry about their finance. Father, I cry to you. You promise us our daily bread. You promise us that if the lily of the feet, they neither tall nor spin, they neither even labor nor gather into bands, if they can be clotted better than Solomon with all the glory and splendor, if the bears of the air can be fed, who never labor nor gather into bands, even they can be fed through winter. Lord, what about us? Are we not, is our life not worth more than 1,000 bears? O oh, ye men of little faith. Lord, I admit, often I forget what you are with me. That you are a loving and a caring father who does not forget his own children. Lord, I often forget what you are to me. That you are the one that forgives all my iniquities and heal all my diseases. So when I'm sick, I don't run to you. I run to physicians. And as a result, I compound my worries. Help me, Lord, to know that you are the source of the joy in my life. That you are my life. That nothing I have on earth, even my breath, come from you. Lord, help me to live one day at a time, not to want everything or to give myself heart attack about the future when I can easily live each day at a time. Help me not to worry about tomorrow because I know my tomorrow is secure and it will take care of itself. Because as long as the Lord abides, my tomorrow is secure. Because I don't care about tomorrow because I know whom owns tomorrow. It is not in my position to take care of that which God has created. It is God's position to do this. God is committed to meeting the needs of his people. Lord, help me to rely on you. Help me not to think of gathering wet up for myself for the days of fire. But rather, to focus on the work that God has given me. Lord, I beseech thee. Help me to focus on doing the right thing at the right time, even now. I want to trust in your promises to take care of every one of my needs. Financial needs, rational needs, physical, social, spiritual, emotional needs. Help me to trust you more than everything else in the world. Help me to overcome worries less. And to overcome trial and difficult situations. All this I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brethren, this is where we conclude our prayer tonight. If you miss our prayer, you can still watch it on our website at cgfnslogin.app or you go to our Facebook page at CGF Open House Fellowship. You can still receive this prayer. This prayer happens once every month. The last Friday is our all night, which we call Tari Night. It's the last Tuesday of every month. Today we will usually take your time. Naturally, we spend one hour. But tonight, we unusually took your time because there is a need to pray. Because the Bible says when there are people to pray, there is a God to listen. Tonight, we have believed we have presented our intercession to God. We know the Lord of righteousness. He will soon bruise Satan underneath your feet shortly. Lord, thank you because you have done this. This we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is well with you. We'll see you again by Sunday next week. God bless you.